Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Spirit of Our Fellowship. I'm Pastor Mike May here in the great city of Richmond, Virginia. We want to welcome everybody to our online worship experience. We don't believe it's by chance that you're here today, but we do believe that there will be something that will be shared that's going to be a blessing to your life. So on behalf of my wife, Pastor Raquel and myself, we just want to say welcome to everybody, to all of our Spirit of Fire family. We call them Spirit of Fire Nation. We love you guys. Appreciate you so much. We love it. Listen, I'm telling you, we miss seeing you guys in person, but we are working on it. We will be in person and um, God is working on some things behind the scenes. And so we want you all to be in agreement with us um, to lock in um, the new facilities for us to have and to house in in person worship. Um, and so we're working on that. And so in the meantime, in between time, we want to make sure that we stay connected with one another. It's so important to remain connected, even from both sides and both ends for us to reach out and for you to reach out, for you to connect with one another. If you see that you haven't seen someone in a while, reach out to them, send them a text, send them a message. Hey, hey, I was thinking about you. You were on my heart. Is there anything you want me to be in agreement with you about? It's so important. God never designed us to do life alone. This is one of the reasons why he gave me the name Spirit of Fire Fellowship. It was to be a fellowship and it's to be a fellowship of believers coming together for a common goal. And so in this process, I'm telling you, God is igniting some things in us. He's revealing some things by his spirit. And this is a time and a season of acceleration. This is a time of restoration. This is a time of wholeness for your life. And so nothing missing, nothing broken and nothing lacking. I want you to buckle up today. We're going to get into this word together. We're going to see, seek God together. We're expecting to hear from him together today. And so whatever the need is that you have, I want you to put your expectation on high for our first timers, first time visitors, those that are logging in. We want to acknowledge you and recognize you. We want to thank God for you showing up. There are many other platforms that you could be on, but you're here. And so there is a word that I believe that God is going to share. Don't turn. Don't go anywhere else right now. Stay here. Stay in tune. Stay locked in because God is going to share something. I truly believe that's going to help transform and change your life. So listen, if that's you and you want to connect with us, our first timers, you can send us a message. Let us know where you're logging in from. Um, you can put it in the comment section. You can send us a message. You can send us an email. Say, hey. I want to learn more about the ministry. You can send us an email at connect at spirit of connect at spirit of to find out more information about the ministry. Or you can log on to our website at spirit of fire dot us spirit of fire dot us to learn more about our vision, who we are, what God has called us to do. All right, y'all, let's go ahead and have a word of prayer and let's go ahead and lock into today's message. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you for this another opportunity to minister to these, your precious sheep. I thank you that revelation knowledge of your word will flow freely from heaven, uninterrupted and unhindered by any satanic or demonic force. None of me, all of you. Holy Spirit, speak to my vocal cords. Think through my mind to bring wisdom, knowledge, and good understanding of the word of God. We do approach it reverently. We thank you that every ear is anointed to hear, every heart is open and ready to receive the engrafted word of God which is able to save our souls. We bless you and we thank you for it. We covered the gifts of the spirit to be in operation and demonstration as needed. We thank you for transformation and change that takes place. We thank you for growth and increase that takes place. Father, we thank you for expanding our territory. And we ask that you exponentially grow us and increase us. We thank you for the infrastructures. We thank you for the systems in place. We thank you for the needs of the people being met. And so we thank you that every person under the sound of my voice, whether live or through replays, whatever, that they will sense your tangible presence in their midst and that this life changing word will help sow into their lives the answers that are needed for the situations that they are going through. So we give you the praise. We give you the glory. We thank you that you wreck our ignorance with your knowledge today. And Father, we're open to receive from you, open to hear from you. We thank you for your comfort and for your love and even the gift of faith that is imparted into your people supernaturally to be able to believe you for things, Father, that they've struggled with in times past. We thank you that this is a time of restoration. You're a God of restoration. You're a God who can heal, set free, deliver, and restore any and every situation. And Father, our, our job is to believe you, to trust you, and to submit to what your word declares. And so we thank you in advance for it. In the name of Jesus, amen. 
and amen. All right, y'all. We are continuing um, in this series. And while, while y'all there, we want to go ahead, share this with as many people. That's your way of inviting people to come in. Share it on your social media sites. Share this message. Share it now. Share it now. Share it now. Share it now. Some of you may be looking on YouTube. It's like, I can't share it. But hey, listen, go ahead and text. Tell somebody, log on on your phone to your social media site. Some of you may be looking at it on television right now. But go ahead and log in and say, hey, tune in on Facebook, wherever. Let people know because God has something for them today. All right. We've been dealing with, I, I titled this um, the triple threat. In other words, I had a different, different messages or titles in my head. Um, and one of, one, of, one of the things uh, with this is there are three key areas, three major areas that Satan tries to tempt individuals in in their lives. And so we started this process of how to deal with the temptations and how to handle these situations in life that show up. And so um, with that, I want to begin in 1 John chapter 2. 1 John chapter 2, and we're going to read verses 15 through 17. And it says, and I'll just do a quick recap from last week, and then I'll continue uh, with today. It says this, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world and the world passeth away and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. So, okay, let, let me, let me break this down. Cause I began to think about the question. What is the world? We talked about love, not the world or the things that are of the world. Okay. When you think about the world, are you talking about just the physical planet? But no, he's talking about the systems, the ideologies, the thought process is that people apart from God, apart from his way of doing things, that they begin to think a certain way. So he says, don't fall in love with their ideologies about how to get things done, how to handle certain situations that oppose my will, my way of doing things. And so he says this, he says, neither the things that are in the world, if any man love the world, the love of the father is not in him. For then he says this, for all that is in the world, and these are the three things. This is why I called it the triple threat. Number one, the lust of the flesh. We dealt with that last week, but I'll do a quick recap. Number two, the lust of the eyes. And then number three, the pride of life. And so, so if you now function in these things, the things that are in the world, he says, it's not of the father, but it's of the world. But then he says this, don't love those things. Don't seek after this way of doing it. He says, seek after my way of doing it. And it's going to handle certain things in your life. It's going to take care of everything in your life because these are three major areas that everything that comes against you is going to be tied into these three areas. The temptation to get off and to do things opposed to God's way of doing it, to do it in and of yourself is going to be tied in these three things. So we're going to go over these three things. Well, we started with number one, the lust of the flesh last week, but I'm going to uh, do a quick recap over this. But before I do that, I want to go to Luke four. Now, this is our major text for this for this series. Luke chapter four, verses one through 14. Now here, this is Jesus being led by the spirit into the wilderness where he's tempted 40 days and nights by Satan. And so Jesus endured these three temptations. He endured these three things in these three areas. And so now we want to look and see not just Jesus being attacked in these areas, but you and I, how Satan comes to steal, kill and to destroy, to tempt you, to get you off course, to get you out of God's rhythm and will and get you into now walking in an area of life that it seems good because a temptation is alluring. It, 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 it's pleasure attached to it. So that's the reason why it's tempting because it's something that you really want in a way. But then too, we're going to see a lot of it is trying to get things a way that opposes the way God says to do it. So before I get into all of that, I want us to read um, Luke four real quick. Luke 4, 1 through 14. And then I'll get back into the rhythm and flow of what I want to talk about today. Luke 4, 
And it says here, and Jesus being full of the Holy Ghost returned from Jordan and was led by the spirit into the wilderness, being 40 days tempted of the devil. And in those days he did eat nothing. And when they were ended, he afterward hungered. And the devil said unto him, if thou be the son of God, command this stone that it be made bread. And Jesus answered him, saying, it is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. And the devil taking him up into a high mountain showed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said unto him, all this power will I give thee and the glory of them for that is delivered unto me and to whomsoever I will, I give it. If thou therefore will worship me, all shall be thine. And Jesus answered and said unto him, get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written that thou shalt worship the Lord thy God and him only shall thou work, shall thou serve. And he brought him to Jerusalem and set him on a pinnacle of the temple and said unto him, if thou be the son of God, cast thyself down from hence. I'm seeing some, some other stuff here. For it is written, he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee. And in their hands, watch this, shall he bear, shall, uh, they shall bear thee up, least at any time thou dash thy foot against the stone. And Jesus answering said unto him, it is said, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And when the devil had ended all the temptation, he departed from him for a season. And Jesus returned in the spirit of, in the power of the spirit into Galilee. And there went out a fame of him through all the region round about. Now there's a lot that we can unpack here, but I want to start dealing with some things here because I didn't want to stop. I wanted to read all the way through it because if I would have begin to just break one down, then I would have got, I know I would have got stuck in a place, but I want to, I want to, I want to deal with something here. So before I start dealing with and unpacking some things in Luke four, that I want to begin to see this one thing that number one, that the spirit led Jesus into the wilderness. But before that even took place, the Bible says that Jesus being full of the Holy Ghost. So Jesus was already this is when Jesus came out of being baptized in the river Jordan by John. And so the spirit lighted upon him like a dove. Heavens opened up. The father said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. And so now Jesus Watch this after he's full of the Holy Ghost. Now he's being led into the wilderness. He was led by the spirit into the wilderness. He was led by the spirit into this wilderness situation. Then now this is an interesting thing, because I remember the very first time this jumped off the page at me. It kind of wrecked my theology about certain things that this was a this was a situation that Jesus was led into for the purpose of his development. And this was his proving ground. And as I was studying this for this series, verse two, when it says being tempted or being 40 days tempted, all of a sudden that word being jumped off the page at me for some reason. I know the Holy Spirit began to, to show me this thing. And then watch this. This word being is translated to try, to make trial of, to test, Watch this for the purpose of ascertaining his quality or what he thinks or how he will behave himself. See, the wilderness for him and this temptation was to show what he was made of, was to show the quality of who he is and who he was as the son of God coming in the form of the son of man to now endure this temptation after being filled with the Holy Spirit after being full of the Holy Ghost, that he was led by the spirit into this wilderness situation. Now, some of you have wilderness situations that either you've been through or you are currently going through. And some of you are trying to figure out why am I going through this? Part of it is there's some things in you that have to be developed and learned and that this is your proving ground for your graduation. Now I gotta go ahead and go with this. 
Because now some of you have been wondering, why do I keep fighting this same fight? It's because there's something that needs to be developed in you. There's something that you need to overcome. And until you pass the test, you will never graduate. And so there are, there are times in your life where there are things that are constantly attacking you that you're going to have to say, wait a minute, enough is enough. I'm going to stand my ground. I'm going to overcome this thing because on the other side of it is my promotion. I, 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 I'm starting to get excited already. I already told, I already told my folks, I said, all right, there's going to be something here today. Let's go and get ready. This is something that I begin to write down. Number one, well, not number one, but don't ever waste your wilderness. Don't ever waste your wilderness. Some of y'all need to write that down. Don't waste your wilderness. <laughs> don't waste your wilderness. What do you mean by that? You already going through it, so you might as well get something out of this. Because if you don't learn what you need to learn and overcome what you need to overcome, people can die in their wilderness and never conquer the thing that God called them to overcome and to conquer. The children of Israel stayed in the wilderness 40 years. It was a 11 day journey, about two weeks. They stayed in it 40 years and the adults died. It was long enough for their children to come out and go into the promised land. Whereas God designed all of them to go into the promised land, but they never learned what they needed to learn in that wilderness place. And they never conquered it. A lot happened in that wilderness. They got their attention off of the God who delivered them. And they said it was better for us in Egypt than coming out here. So it was better for you to walk in slavery because it was a place of familiarity. And God said this, no, I brought you out of that place. Some people are so used to being enslaved that they can't handle their freedom. And you got to be ready to handle the peace. You're so used to drama that you don't know what peace is like. You can't handle it. It's too, it's too quiet for you. And it's like you constantly, and some of you feed off of drama. You feed off of stuff going wrong. Because now it energizes, it motivates, whatever it is, I don't, it's a twisted way of thinking. And God said, I need you to come out of this mentality. Yeah, I brought you out of Egypt, but did Egypt come out of you? Oh, I'm, 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 here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. See, some of you are so afraid. You are so used to what happened. You don't realize God has already changed your situation around. He has already changed that relationship. He has already changed the hearts of people around you. But you are so in you are so engulfed with what once was that you don't realize that God has already changed the situation. He has already turned it around. So you can't even enjoy the fruit of what God has already turned around because you so cluttered in your thinking, so consumed in your thinking about how it used to be that you don't even realize he done already turned the thing around. You already free. Everything is already well. And God is saying this. You got to just chill. I'm coming for you. It's all right. No, stay there. Don't you don't you dare turn away. You keep your tail right there. Because you need to hear this because I'm telling you, oh, man, I'm sensing this. I'm sensing this. I'm sensing this. I'm sensing this strong. That you, you got to, Satan is trying to, he's trying to, he's trying to lure you away. He's trying to lure you away from your purpose. He's trying to lure you away from the will of God for your life. And you're going to have to make a decision. No, I'm going to fulfill the word of God, the will of God for my life. And I will overcome this situation. I will watch this. Some of you have been dealing with depression. Some of you have been dealing with anxieties. Some of you have been dealing with fear insecurities. And I got to get to this because I want to show you some here. And so watch this Strong's definition of being. When I talk about being meaning to show or ascertain the quality part of this, watch this means to test. It means to scrutinize, to entice, but watch this, this one word, it means also to develop a level of discipline. See, discipline is going to be the key factor here. Because would Jesus be disciplined enough to handle the temptation? Will you be disciplined and consistent enough to handle the temptation? See, the Bible says Jesus was full of the Holy Ghost when he went into the wilderness. Some of you have gone into the wilderness, but you ain't been full of the Holy Ghost. That's why it's been hard for you not to overcome the temptation, because you got to be full of the power of God and now consumed with it so that when that attack comes, you are strong enough to overcome it. 
Some of you have been weary and well doing and you've been feeling the weariness. And this is why you're so tired because you ain't full of him. And what he told me to tell you while I was sitting here this morning getting ready, when I was like, okay, I was in the room and I was just meditating on this thing and thinking about it. It's like they got to spend time in my presence to handle the things that they're going through. And you've taught them and I've taught them through my word and through demonstration, but they have to be consistent in doing it. You got to get in the place where the presence of God is your primary focus, where you get so included, so, so engulfed in him that watch this. Okay, let me let me help you. As a as a married man, there are things that I shouldn't even expect my wife to meet certain needs to meet because it's not her job to meet it. It's God's job. My relationship with him will fulfill certain things. What we do sometimes is we use people to fulfill needs that only God was designed to fulfill. And if you don't understand how to ascertain or to to decipher the difference, you'll now use an individual to fulfill something that only your time spent with God will fulfill. So they can constantly give you things that you're asking for, but it never meets the need. Be that the reason why, and then you'll feel as though they're not trying, they're not meeting your need because really you asking them to do something to take a natural thing to meet a spiritual need. And that, that is treachery against your spirit. Yeah. Let me tell you this because there are things that watch this, well, oh, it's so much running through my head. When I know who I am, when I know who I am in Christ, when I speak well of myself, when I speak to myself constantly, I don't need the affirmation constantly of others. Why? Because I'm so secure in me. Now, see, I'm getting ahead of myself because this is what these temptations are going to deal with. Let me, let me, let me, let me teach it to you. Let me teach it to you because if I just share it without really going through the scripture, I got to be disciplined enough to stick with this so that now we can shout later. But I want you to begin to see something here. All right, now watch this. This is what I begin to see. I want to give you some scriptures concerning temptation and, and how to handle it. Luke 22, 40 says this. And Jesus said it like this. And when he was at the place, he said unto them, pray that you enter not into temptation. So he says, OK, part of your prayer should be for me not to enter into the thing that I'm being tempted with. So prayer is a weapon that I can use to come against temptation, to hold me back for my restraint in being and su submitting to the temptation. But watch this. He didn't just say, pray that you don't be tempted. He says, pray that you don't enter into the temptation. The temptation will come. It's going to be part of your development if you treat it right. Luke twenty two forty six 46 says this. And he said unto them, why sleep ye rise and pray, lest you enter into temptation. Now, this is when Jesus was praying. And now the disciples, he came back and they were asleep. They couldn't hang with him. And he says this, watch this, watch this. Why sleep ye? Come on, come on, man. Now watch this. Oh, Lord. I got so much I want to deal with this. He says, why sleep ye? Rise and pray. This is why I ask people, you've been spending time with God? You've been spending time in prayer? Because you can tell when the glow leaves a person, especially when they've been at that place. Some may have never been in that place where you live in the overflow, where you're so full of, of God and so full of his presence, his spirit, so full of the word that it now it comes out in your actions. See, when you when you're tired, when you when you when you're drained, you become moody, you become irritable. You know, we, we do it a lot. We, we get snappy with people. We, we get it's like, OK, we discombobulated. And a lot of times we need to have a time where we can refresh ourselves. Jesus did this. Jesus went from one place of prayer to another place of prayer. And in between, he worked miracles. You got to hear that. You got to hear this. Some people are so busy trying to work, 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 work to perform miracle after miracle after miracle, whether it's with your family, on your job, doing whatever. You're trying to get all this stuff done. And now you so spent that you have nothing left. And now people are trying to figure out what's wrong with you. And you're trying to figure out what's wrong with you. You need to replenish yourself. Number one, replenish yourself in the presence of God. Let me, let me be, let me be straight up. Let me be straight up. I've been teaching this to folk for years. 
The reason why people don't experience it is because they don't do it. If you stick with it and try it, you'll see what I'm talking about. Even in Ephesians, it says, don't be drunk with wine wearing this excess, but be ye filled with the spirit. Speaking to yourself in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. He says, don't be drunk with wine, but be filled with the spirit. And then he gives the level of drunkenness in the spirit. He equates it to being drunk in the natural. You know how drunk people are in the natural. Their inhibitions are gone. They don't have a care in the world. They just start sharing whatever. <laughs> it's like three people who will tell you the truth. A child, a person who's angry and somebody who's drunk. It just everything just come out. So he says this. But watch this. He says, don't be drunk with wine. Watch this. You don't need the wine to calm you down. The reason why you're using the wine to calm you down as a natural supplement is because you have yet to tap into the power of the spirit to meet that need that you are taking a natural substance to use to now calm you down. OK, I know. I know I'm messing with some of you. You got them. You got it in the car. OK, that's what you want to do. That's between you and God. I ain't got none. I ain't condemning you. None of that. But I'm telling you, there's a higher level. There's a higher level. God's word is true. If you spend time in worship, putting on worship music while you praying in the spirit and staying there long enough, depending on how empty you are, will determine sometimes how long you need to stay there. There are times that I got a bro fresh candle, le gris se la la marche te de bro, la ramande de de bre, le cumbre se te de bre, and then I put on some worship music, or sometimes I just stay in worship. And that worship time, all of a sudden, I sensed the power and presence of God and tears flowing down my eyes. And I knew that, God, I needed this. It was a time of refreshing. I cast off all care on you for you care for me. And so now I come out of that place in that presence of God. Now I'm acting better. I'm acting better towards my wife. I'm acting better towards my children. I'm a better father. I'm a better leader. I'm a better husband. I'm a better son. I'm a better man. I'm better. Because now watch this, because I'm full of the Holy Ghost, he can lead me. He can guide me. He can direct me. I'm more sensitive to his voice. I'm more sensitive to his wisdom. And now watch this. When I pray not to enter into temptation, that means too he'll lead me to do things that won't even allow me to be in a place where I'm tempted. Because he'll give me wisdom to make wise choices and decisions. And so now because I follow his leading, I'll never enter into the temptation, even though it's presenting itself because I'm following him. See, it would be hard for me to, to watch this, to go into the temptation of an adulterous affair if I never even put myself in a position to be with somebody and to be around them to even start conversations that will lead to it or even put myself in compromising positions. And so the Holy Ghost will lead me not into temptation, but he will deliver me from evil because he'll give me wisdom to make a wise choice to know that I should not go over her house and now do some negative. Netflix and chill or to say we just having a business dinner over candlelight and both of us drinking. And then all of a sudden I'm looking into her eyes. She looking into mine and that just look foolish. And you said we only having business dinner. It's like, come on, man, you ain't stupid. You know what you're doing. You know what's going to lead you. You know what issues I'm trying. I don't want to be. I want to come across as fussing. See, see, I, I understand this stuff. And sometimes it's like, come on, folks, let's think. Let's use the brain God has given us. We, we know. And the real issue sometimes is people seeing because they want to. You wanted to do it. Just go ahead and at least admit it. But now say this. Watch this. If God says don't do it, I don't care how I feel about it. I got to overcome this. I overcome evil with good. So if he says, don't be drunk with wine when there's excess, but be filled with the spirit, speaking to myself in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs and making melody in my heart to the Lord. And as I begin to sing to God and then, Lord, you know what I'm dealing with. You know what I'm going through. You already know this stuff. But now I just begin to sing under you. I don't care if you off key, put on the song. If you don't know the words, find a song that's filled with the word, that's filled with things that's going to encourage your spirit, that's going to strengthen you. You know, I'm sorry, I'm not trying to call out anybody, 
But if you depress in a relationship and you constantly hearing, I'm going down, it's like that ain't helping you. I'm sorry. All it's doing is you now like, come on, sing it, girl. Oh, I feel you. Oh, yeah. I'm there. And when God says you can have joy and peace, if you just speak to yourself, if you just overcome it. And, I, and I'm getting to the point and I, I've been trying to be cool. I've been trying to be cool because I, I, I want to I walk in this grace and this love and this mercy. But I know at the same time, we got to speak truth to certain things. And a lot of times people just they try to make up things and they take on the world's mindset to try to handle what God has already told us how to handle it. OK, let me give you an example. It's like stuff like when people tell you it's OK to not be OK. You hear that a lot now with from therapists and people. But watch this. I know what they're trying to say. But with God, it ain't OK to not be OK. Because if it was okay to not be okay, why would he give you a remedy to be okay? He tells you what to do to come out of it. He tells you if you keep your mind stayed on me, I'll keep you in perfect peace. You see, he says casting down imaginations and every high thing, casting down images and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. But you got to have the knowledge of God to even know if that high thing is coming against it. Because if all you do is take on the world, that's why he said, don't love the world. And so now watch this. You will listen to a quote unquote life coach who has no depth in the spirit and no knowledge of the word. And you will take their advice over God's advice. See, these are the temptations, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life. And so you'll take these things and now say, OK, yeah, and, and I get it. I'm all for therapy. But my thing is, what is that therapist telling you? Are they in alignment with the word? Do, do what do what they say? They may break it down in a way. I never thought about it like that. Well, God then said it. But did you ever give attention to his word? We got to get past this, folks. It's time for us to take God at his word and apply. OK, let me get ready to go. Let me go. Because that's why I say I want to come across. Please, please hear me. This is not from a condemnation a self-righteous tone. I'm upset with the enemy because I know that the word works when we work it. But we have to take ownership and say, let me recognize what this what, what Satan is doing here. And in 1 Corinthians 10, 13, it says this, there is no temptation taking you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful who will not suffer or allow you to be tempted above that you are able, but will with the temptation also make a way of escape that you may be able to bear it. So whenever a temptation comes, the fact that the temptation is even allowed to come already shows you that you have the ability to resist what's showing up. OK, he always makes a way of escape for you. There's always an out. There's always an exit plan for the thing you're being tempted in. OK, so understanding this even knows that if you're feeling pressure in an area of your life, you already know I can overcome this because God wouldn't even allow this. I didn't say he caused it. But he wouldn't even allow this thing to come because he knows what's in me. Don't forget. Don't forget that the Holy Spirit led Jesus in the wilderness to be tempted 40 days and nights. Watch this to ascertain the quality of what was in him to prove him. See, what you've been going through is not to prove you to others, but to prove you to you. Because now God is building something up in you for what he has created and called for you to do. And you're going to have to overcome this thing once and for all and never go back into it again. In Jesus name. Many of you. Many are called, but few are chosen. But the chosen ones are the ones that show up. It's like you can't be chosen for a team if you never show up for trials. You can't be chosen for a job if you never show up for the interview. You can't be chosen for something if you never show up. And so what God is trying to say is, I need for you to show up for this fight. 
because I need you. This ain't about you. And what Satan has done is he has tried to make you think it's all about you because when you are self-centered and you are self, you you're thinking about what you're going through, it ain't got nothing to do with nobody else. But I'm telling you now, the enemy is trying to come to sift some of your minds like we, and I'm telling you, I'm praying that your faith fail you not in this trial. And because watch this, it ain't about you. It's about the lives you are going to impact once you come out of this thing. Because in the 14th verse, it says that Jesus came out in the power of the spirit. Why? Because when he went through his workout and he successfully completed every temptation, he came out in power. And I declare in Jesus name that you coming out in power. Yeah, 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 uh-huh, uh-huh. And I speak, and I'm, I see somebody in particular, but I just speak this now. Some of you, the goals, the dreams, the vision, the vision that you had for the business, the vision that you had for the company, the vision that you had for the organization, and some as over a period of time because of just circumstances that have hit you, hit your home, hit your life, hit your you know family, whatever the case is, that, that God is saying this, Satan has tried to use those things to quiet down the vision. But God is saying, I'm calling that thing out of you now again. I'm calling you to refresh that thing. And I'm going to restore energy in you because Satan has tried to wear you down over time through temptations, over time through secret things. And God is saying this, this time around, this time around, when you step out again, I'm going to show you what it always should have been. I'm going to reveal and manifest everything. Oh, Lord, I, I'm, I'm debating. I may have to just text this person privately and say, you better be ready. You better be ready for the glory. I don't care how old or how young you are. The glory is going to hit. Bible says this in. Um, oh, man, I didn't intend on getting stuck here. OK, but I'm a James one. Verses 12 through 16 says it like this. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life. Which the Lord have promised to them that love him. Let no man say when he is tempted, I'm tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. So it ain't God bringing the temptation. We know the thief comes to steal, kill, and to destroy. We know Satan is the tempter. He says, but every man is tempted. Watch this. Every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. So your own lust in one of these areas, you're being enticed by something that has been allowed to grow or develop to a point where it's constantly causing you to fall into it, constantly causing you to commit it, constantly causing you to stay in a rhythm or a cycle for your life. He says he's drawn away of his own lust and enticed. You may be predisposed, well, I can say predisposed, but there may be an area in your life that you know that you fed over a period of time. It started out as a temptation, but then it turned into a stronghold. And so now this lust in your life in a particular area has now is always pulling on you. It's always drawing on you to come towards it. And whatever you feed grows. Whatever you feed grows. So if you want it to die, you need to cut off its life source. Whatever is feeding it, cut it off. You know what it is with you. You everybody's different, but you know the areas in your life that okay, I've had some issues here. I've had some issues in this area or this area, whether it's anger, whether it's lustful sexual desires or cravings or you know. But I, I got to get to this because I want to talk to you about these lusts, the lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, pride of life, and define them. So that you can identify, because we said last week with the lust of the flesh, this deals with legitimate needs. And so you may have a legitimate need, but then how you now meet the need is usually the issue. Just like when Jesus was tempted first, he was fasting 40 days and nights. And afterward, he says it was he was hungry. 
So just imagine the level of starvation, the level of hunger he was enduring. So now the first temptation was, okay, if thou be the son of God, command this stone that it be made bread. In other words, try to meet the need of the hunger apart from the way God wants you to do it. So you got you to understand. And the thing that, that's the trickiest part about it is it's a legitimate need. So if it's a legitimate need, a lot of times what we do is convince ourselves the way that we meet. It's like it's like a drug dealer that says, hey, man, I got to feed my family. And so I got to go out here and grind. I got to do this. I got to do what I got to do to me to feed my family. OK, yeah, the need is legitimate. You, your family needs to be fed. They need to be clothed. They need to be housed. But then God says in his word, watch this. Seek first my kingdom and my righteousness and all this stuff going to be added unto you. So now it's the way that you need to go about doing it is the issue. That's the issue. Well, I have these desires in my body sexually. And since my wife or my husband ain't meeting the need, I'm going outside of the marriage to do it. No, I understand. God created us as sexual beings and that we have these sexual desires and cravings. But God says I want it to be fulfilled in the covenant in the context of marriage so that you, know, you do this. And so watch this. That's why it's treachery against the covenant to go outside of the relationship. It's a covenant that's been created. It's a blood covenant that really should have been established when that hymen was broken by that penis of the man. I'm not trying to be vulgar, but now it's shared and you come into agreement. That was the original intent. And that you are coming into covenant agreement and to now go outside of the relationship is now breach of the contract. And so God is saying, okay, I understood that you felt lonely. I understood, but what you should have done is communicated properly and talk properly versus now being quiet because now that temptation was luring you out. And because this one being met, now all of a sudden the, the woman on the job look good or the man on the job because he gave you a little attention. Now all of a sudden now, because you had this legitimate need and because watch this, Satan will always feed on your insecurities. Let me help you. Let me help you. And if you're insecure about yourself, anybody that gives you a compliment, if you don't watch it, you can take it and run with it. This is why sometimes I used to be mindful about how I would compliment women and things because I'm always an encourager. Usually I'm a person I like to speak life into you and do that. But I had to be mindful because depending on who you're talking to, they could take it the wrong way and they think it's flirting. All I'm doing is encouraging. And so I had to be mindful and use wisdom as to know who I need to talk to and who I don't need to talk to. Or instead of me doing it, I bring a woman along to say, OK, you speaking to him or to be with me while I'm talking to you. See, see now. Pray not that you enter not. Pray that you enter not into temptation. See, I'll give you wisdom. I'll give you a wisdom, a mouth and wisdom that none of your um, um, naysayers will be able to gainsay nor resist. I'll show you how to do this thing. See, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get to this thing because if you understand the mindset of it, because Satan is playing tricks with your mind. Man, who am I talking to? Man, I'm man. I feel like I'm, I'm dealing with something that's really been embedded in some people that you are so. OK. There's a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end of it is destruction, scripture says. And when you think a certain way about something, you can think you're so right about it that anybody comes and gives you wisdom contrary to what you think. And it comes against that knowledge that has been embedded in you. You would reject it instantly. Thinking you right, but you wrong. Everybody see that you wrong. But because you see yourself is right, because you're so self-centered about it, that you're not open to wisdom. And please don't be that person. Be open to the wisdom of God in your situation, whatever it is. He says, a man is attempted when he's drawn away of his own lust and entice. Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin. See, now watch this. This is interesting. The lust, the lust isn't sin yet. He says when it is conceived, think about conception. When the sperma, the sperm of a man enters into the, the womb of a woman and hits that egg, conception takes place. Watch this. He says when it's conceived, when lust is conceived, when that thing enters in and now something is developed in you, it brings forth sin. It'll cause the action of sin. 
So if you deal with it in its seed form, it's easy to deal with something when it's first introduced versus when it's been cultivated in your mind, germinated in your mind. And by the time you show up in the environment, hey, it's a matter of time. You about to fall into it. Because sometimes people go into this thing like my man Sherman Cump, be like, yes, I can. I can handle it. No, scripture says flee you for lust. Get your tail out of there. Don't put yourself in an environment where you know you're going to sin. Because you know your weakness. He says this, I need for you because I'm trying to help you. I'm not trying to rob you of your fun. I'm not trying to rob you of your joy because he knows, watch this, and sin when it is finished, bringing forth death. See, everybody look good when they popping bottles and they shouting and everybody holding it up with their hookahs and all this stuff. And it looks fun. But you don't see the destruction behind the scenes, the aftermath of a wrecked relationship, the aftermath of you've been popping models and you've been doing stuff. And now all of a sudden you make a bad decision. And not only does it wreck your life, it wrecks somebody else's life. So you don't see the bad decisions that come as a result of it. All you see is the, 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 the euphoria, the joy, the fun that's, asso that's associated with it. See, see, God ain't trying to wreck your fun. He's trying to keep you out of sin and out of death. Death is associated with loss. I, I know this ain't always popular. It's like, man, just tell me that God going to turn it around in five days and I'm going to be a millionaire by tomorrow. And that the acceleration. But these are things that hinder the acceleration, that hinder the manifestation. And in this day and time and culture, it's so much that is flooding us. We got to know how to resist. We got to know how to guard. And we got to protect our spirit, man. We got to protect our minds. And we got to be full of God to handle this earth. We got to be full of him to be able to resist. Because everywhere you turn is something. I can't look at a show without the commercials being more lustful than the actual show itself. And it's like seduction is everywhere. Everywhere. Oh, God told me to share this. I, I, think I, I think the Holy Ghost told me to share this when I was getting ready. Years ago, and I've shared this before, but years ago, the Holy Spirit told me, I was, about, I was in my early 20s. He said, I want you to shut off all television. He says, I want to be the first person you talk to when you get up and the last person you talk to when you go to sleep. Now, during this time, I'm working full time. I'm in ministry helping out. And I think at this time I was leading corporate prayer, morning prayer for our youth ministry. OK, so I get up 5 a.m., get ready, go take my shower, get ready, take my stuff for work, go pray. Go to work. Come back to church to go to classes and things and serve in ministry, go home. And during this time. He says, I don't want you to watch any television because television introduced me to so many seductive and perverted things. And it was feeding things to me. At that time, we didn't have the cell phones. We didn't have all of the other access that we do now. And so he says, cut it off because then because I'd be watching stuff at night on a, on, on, on a send to the max. I mean, Cinemax um, channel. And so I'm looking at this stuff. That is feeding because I'm already a young man and even as a teenager coming up looking at things that's feeding lust because I'm, my hormones already was raging. Now watch this. I'm a single guy trying to live for God, knowing that I can't express my sexual desires outside of this covenant of marriage. I'm like, OK, God, so now how do I handle this? I want to live for you. I want to do right. But now, you know. I'm already a certain way. Soon as I wake up in the morning while I'm going to bed. So now watch this. Watch what begins to happen. As I begin to do this. All of a sudden. Urges begin to quiet down. Because I was taking authority over. And so now, even though there may have been certain desires there, but because I was disconnecting from the thing that was feeding the desire. And was feeding the images all of a sudden now, and I'm spending time with God, I'm in prayer, I'm in Bible Institute, I have the word going in my eyes, in my ears, out of my mouth, building myself up. Some of y'all are like, well, that's too much. Hey, you got to do what you got to do. 
So I'm not teaching something that I ain't done. And that's why I teach it with such passion, because I know what began to happen is I walked in a level of discipline for the first time in my life there that I was like, wait a minute, this is true. God, your word works. And the Holy Spirit is more powerful than anything that I could come against that could come against me in this earth. The greater one abides in me. And so now watch what become what what happens is I become so spiritually sensitive and the power of God began to manifest in my life in such a great way that I could go into place. I went into this and I've said this several times. I went into this uh, video store when I found it was released to even look at stuff. I remember I don't even know when I was released. I don't even know how long it was. I just did it till he said I'm, I'm released to now go ahead and watch again. And you know what? I did not miss that TV at all. Because I stayed occupied with other things and I stayed busy doing other things so that I wouldn't just be idle sitting there. But I'm telling you, I went into this store, this video store, and I remember feeling so nauseous. And I'm like, what is that, God? I mean, to the point I felt like I was about to throw up. I saw that I was standing near the horror section. And back then they had this room where all of the pornography was. So you had to go in this special room to even get to the stuff. I could literally sense the spirits that were in the movies. That's how strong, that's how sensitive I was in the spirit. And I'm like, cause that had never happened to me before. And I'm like, God. And cause sometimes when you're engulfed in it, you're not as sensitive to it. It's just like when you eat and you stop eating certain things and you do it over a period of time and then you reintroduce that stuff to your body, it feels foreign. It's like, oh, something ain't right. It just, my body ain't set right. Same way with your spirit and with your mind. That when you stop introducing things over a period of time, it's now, it's a level of healthiness that's now coming to your spirit, man, and to your soul, that now you're detoxing. See, you gotta do that. You gotta detox from what you've been pouring in and now pour the word in, the washing of the water of the word to, refr to refresh, to flush out that stuff. And I'm telling you, so at least God showed me, you know what to do, you know what not to do. You know what to listen to, what not to listen to. You know the things that stir up desires in you, you know the things that now stir up my spirit in you. And during that time also, I gotta just, I'm just gonna share it all. During that time also, I wasn't listening to a lot of secular music. This was just what he was doing with me. I'm just being honest. Now, it wasn't that I never did. I might watch a video on TV or a little something here and there, but it was like, honestly, the majority of what I was listening to was, was gospel. It was, but I, there was certain music that still had flavor to it that I like, that still fed me, that got me into the presence of God, but I enjoyed pumping it in my car while I was driving with the windows down and the sunroof open. So, but that was me because I realized the stuff that won't talking about nothing but doing drugs, sleeping with women, and that you, you still hear it now, is dealing with major areas, three major areas. Money, the focus on getting money, which ain't nothing wrong with having money, but God says, I want you to be covetous, and so it's the spirit of covetousness that's in it. Women or sexual desires, fulfilling sexual needs in perverted ways, or violence. So if I don't feed myself that stuff, because what you feed does affect you more than you realize. So what, man, I done got into this. Well, this be the message for the day. It's like, I guess I believe I'm supposed to do it. I did not intend on staying here like this. So whatever you feed grows. And so what it did was I became, I was so in tune from a spiritual perspective and then God showed me something. When I began to reintroduce certain shows or certain things, it wasn't instant. But over a period of time, I realized certain levels of power and sensitivity began to dwindle down because I wasn't walking in that level of discipline in the spirit. Now watch this. You'll still go to heaven. But to walk in a level of power on this earth, there's certain disciplines and certain things you got to walk in. It's like the price tag. When you go into a, into a nice into a store and you see a nice outfit, 
But then you look at the price tag, you're like, well, it ain't that nice because of how much it costs. See, the level of consecration that you give will determine the level of power you walk in. It, it, just, it just does. It just does. You know, I'm sorry, you can't get around it. If you want to walk in that power, then there's certain disciplines you have to invoke again. This is it's a certain way. You just can't do what you want to do and expect the power to flow and manifest. See, I've been on both sides of it. And this is what I teach people. I'll teach you the truth, but it's up to you to do it. Now you have the decision. It's like this. I know that ice cream, if I eat a bunch of ice cream, that's not good for me, but I know it tastes good. And I was eating some ice cream last night and I put too much in my cup and I didn't even finish it. And in the past, I would have forced myself to finish it. But I was like, you know what? And I was telling my wife this. I said, my appetite is changing. I said, as I stop introducing certain things, it's like my appetite is changing. Even when I reintroduce it, it's like I, I don't want it anymore. I don't want it the way that I used to want it. It's changing. And it's the same way spiritually. When you stop introducing things, it's like, and see, that's why you do the do's and you won't do the don'ts. What we try to do is just try to stop. And a lot of people just preach stop, 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 stop. Versus live like this or pour the word in you and do this, live in this, walk in the spirit. The Bible says walk in the spirit and you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. It didn't say stop walking in the lust of the flesh and you'll be in the spirit. Uh, -uh. As I introduce and start walking in the spirit, the lust of the flesh begins to dwindle and I overcome those things on a regular basis in my life. And what happens is even the temptation and the desire, excuse me, the desire begins to dwindle down in areas when I'm so full of him and I'm so consumed. There's like, man, I ain't even thought about doing this in a while. Because I've been so consumed with him and his agenda. I remember hearing a preacher say it like this. It's like, man, I'm so busy. I ain't got time to sin. Because I'm so busy doing kingdom work. And you keep yourself occupied. And then it, watch this. And Jesus said to, to watch this. My meat is to do the will of my father. In other words, I get fed off of doing what I'm called to do. And the reason why some people are feeling depleted is because they're not in the rhythm of what God told them to do. Because part of your lifeline is connecting to what you're calling created by God to do. Ooh, God is not, he is not obligated to fund your dysfunction. He is not obligated to fund or supply energy to what he didn't tell you to do. He will meet the supply for what he called you to do. And there will be more energy to do what you're called to do. And the reason why you worn out is because it's like a round peg in a square um, um, hole. And all of a sudden you're trying to figure out why it ain't fitting is because you're not in the rhythm of the grace for your life. And God is saying, if you get into the rhythm of what I called you to do, I will supernaturally charge you. And there will be joy once again that comes to your life because your meat is to do the will of your heavenly father. It's time. It's time. It's time. It's time. I declare greater. It's like I hear it like this. It's like scales falling off, weights falling off. It's the shedding of the old. It's like the shedding of a skin, the shedding of that old way of thinking about it. The fresh and the new has come. In the name of Jesus, I'm, I'm just going to be, I'm, I'm done. Let me move this out of my way. I'm done. But let me speak and let me prophesy to you. Glory to God. Roba shekala masele le bu frefere bush ela di kumbra fra male beche la rande lugumbe ve ve la mando kumbre fra hu re basetene masetene bro se kala masetene lugumbre fra shele bu arama do kumbre fra se la mande ke de boche mi ka do kumba ni ko male boche kande sene no kumba no kumba nene ne moche nene ne bre no more no more no more no more no more. Oh, you shall be skilled in the spirit. 
You shall be skilled in the spirit to know how to deal with the wiles and the tactics of the devil. For I've taught you this day and you shall learn more and more for the revelation that I'm about, that I'm about, <laughs> that I'm about to reveal shall be greater and greater and greater. And you shall walk in dominion, says the spirit of grace. You shall walk in dominion in every area of your life and you will not fall and you will never fall. That's it. That's it. You'll never fall. You'll never fall. Glory to God. Glory to God. Who I sense the strength. Who I sense strength. Shobre. Oh, we done tapped into something here. We done tapped into something here. Glory to God. Glory to God. Sheroma Shakon. Who you shall no longer be a surface dweller, but you're going to live in the spirit. You're going to live at a higher level from this day forward. You're going to overcome things that have overcome you for years. And you're going to walk in victory. You're going to walk in truth. You're going to walk in my grace like never before. And your eyes, the scales off of your eyes will be open to see things that you've never seen before about yourself, about others, about the will of God for your life. And there, there should be a greater strength that will come that will cause you to accomplish great things in me, says the Lord. Now, Lord, I want to make sure I, I see that right, say that right and sense it right. It's, it's, it's in essence, it to, in a, to capsulate it, you're going to walk in such skill in the spirit and understanding. You're graduating to another level. You're graduating to another level. And how to be pinpoint and accurate in dealing with areas in your life and Satan will realize I no longer can trick them like I've been tricking them all this time. I declare that your eyes will be open to see every tactic, every scheme, every plot and every ploy. I come against the strategies that have been developed against you in the spirit. I declare that your eyes will be open to new information. I declare that you will be so solid in your calling. Yeah, your calling and your election will be made sure unto you. And that you will be forever settled in what I've graced you to do. And that you will move forward with it in power. Yeah, in Jesus name. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I didn't even start my clock today, but amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. We bless you. Yeah, 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 yeah. If you agree with that, go ahead and type amen. If you can, if you're able to type it in, type amen. So be it. It is so. Whatever you want to say. <laughs> it is so. It is so. Some of y'all senses like, my goodness, I, I have never experienced this. God is doing something. God is doing something. He has instructed me not to hold back any longer. Whatever he tells me to say and to do, I'll do it. Without hesitation, without apologizing, with boldness, with might and with power. This ministry is going to another place. Well, I've heard that. OK, you do what you want to. Either you with it or you ain't. God is doing something. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. This is a groundwork for something greater that is yet to be seen. That that I ain't going I ain't going to run from it. That apostolic grace and prophetic anointing is getting stronger. And we must build not only locally but globally. Uh -huh. And I've been instructed, and this was something that he had always placed in me, but I wasn't sure the time and the place. It was like, not only will I, it's other ministries, other churches to be planted. He says, I want to make sure. He says, build your team here. And I'll begin to grow it and develop it. If you believe you're supposed to be a part of this team, let us know. It's time to roll. And I need y'all to be in agreement with us for this new facility. 
Be in agreement. Call it out in, in your prayer time. See, the reason why some of you have been disconnected is because you haven't connected. Part of connection is you connect through your prayers. You connect through your agreement. You connect through your seed. And servanthood as well. Oh, I like to break it down. Let me break it down. Time, talent, and treasure. The giving of those three connects you to the source of any vision God calls you to. And so now the resolve needs to be, okay, he's called us to train his people, to teach his people who they are, their authority, their rights and privileges as believers, and also to be ministers of reconciliation, to bring them in, raise them up and send them out. And we're going to do it with power. You talking about a Holy Ghost army and God is starting with you. Jesus started with the 12 and imparted into them. And that 12 turned into the 70 and the 70 grew and then it grew from there. And then the first mega church in the book of Acts was created. 3000 got born again with one message from Peter. God wants to do great and mighty things through us and through you. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. We bless you. We adore you. We glorify you. And it is so. Now, any person out there that's not born again. Who? Yeah, I see that. I see that. I see that new ethnicities in Jesus name, new eth ethnicities, ethnicities, ethnic backgrounds are coming in now in Jesus name. You're going to see it. You're going to see it. People who are tuning in online that haven't said anything just yet. They've been watching. They've been watching and they've been watching. But God is speaking something to your heart now that is like you're supposed to be a part of this There's a connection that you're feeling. There's something that you're seeing and you're sensing. It's like, man, I like this. I like what Mike's saying. Some of you know me personally. Some of you may have never met me before, but God is doing something in you right now. If that's you, God wants you to connect now to this ministry, to this vision, whether you want to join it, become a partner or a member to say, hey, I believe in what you're doing. I want to connect. I just feel led to say that right now. I just saw it. I just saw it. I saw some faces. I just saw images. But these are people of other cultures, other ethnicities, and all of a sudden other races, whatever, other um, I just say pigmentation. We're all the one race, the human race. But I'm telling you, God is doing something great. God is doing something great. So, Father, we bless you. We thank you in Jesus name. Now, watch this. I want you to repeat this after me. If you want to get born again today, say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you're the Christ, the son of the living God. I believe that you died for me. You were raised from the dead for me. Come inside my heart now. I receive you as my Lord in Jesus name. Amen. All right, y'all. That's it. That's it. Now, at this time, we're going to honor God in our giving. There's some information coming up on your screen. If God is leading you to sow, um, listen, if this is your home, your church home, listen, your tithes go to your local church. For those that are connected here, members here, your tithes come to this local house. But then for those that may be part of other ministries, your time go to your home church because there is a vision that that man or woman of God has for that vision. But if and as you're led, you're sowing offering. And so if that's you and you want to connect with us and you want to sow, listen, there's uh, some other ways, some many ways that are up on your screen and by you can sow. Some of y'all haven't sown. I don't know how long. Go ahead and sow. Obey the spirit of God. Some of you like, well, I'm still. No, just obey, 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 obey. Obey. Some of y'all think too much. Obey. That's one thing I learned. Well, I, I talk about that later. I talk about that some in some leadership classes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Huh? I can't hear. Hmm? The meetup is Saturday. Oh, as we're doing this, um, I've been instructed. We have a meetup on Zoom meetup on this Saturday. I believe it's at 11 o'clock, 11 a.m. Um, I think a notice is already going out to everyone. So check your emails, check your emails for the Zoom link for that. Um, yeah, check your emails for that Zoom link for a meetup that we're having this upcoming Saturday, 11 a.m. All right. Well, I want you to sow in faith. I declare and decree the best is yet to come. I declare great favor over your lives in the name of Jesus. Well, y'all love you guys so much. God bless you. Well, we are changing a culture, igniting a passion, and living a dream. God bless you, and I'll see you next time. Peace.